The university consists of 120 acres on one campus with off-site residences. The university has about 15,000 um, students and 2,500 staff. Um, so it's, it's a town, basically. Currently the university's um, got a, 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 about 110 million um, new build, capital new build going on. Um, this is going to allow us to increase our student numbers by around about 1,000. The current build is a new uh, general teaching area building and a new 705 student bedroom accommodation. I'm basically trying to um, reduce the uh, energy consumption of the lighting, which is a very high um, energy consumption on campus. We're able to uh, derive any savings and pile it back into uh, energy reduction. Um, and that's where the Dali lighting system comes in. It started off originally as a trial in a sm quite a small area um, and it had its limitations when we started using it um, because it couldn't run over different subnets. Um, and in cooperation with um, FAB and Helvar, we developed the product with them to work across subnets. So now we can have multiple buildings connected to one Dali server. The Dali system here is based on um, a Helvar product and that product was designed to be installed in one building and managed and maintained from that one building. Most um, big organisations have to put some sort of lighting control in apart from the light switch. Um, if we could rely on everybody to turn, to turn the lights off we wouldn't be using Dali. <laughs> uh, the controls in this project are uh, networked over a wide area network allowing a central point of contact so that it's easy to monitor the entire estate from a central location. It allows us to set uh, out the output of the light, we can set scenes, um, we can get reports on faults, um, lamp failures and ballast failures. Um, and obviously we can actually control individual lights without having to actually go out into the building, we can do it from, from a remote area. This also, I forgot to tell you, also does um, emergency lighting self-test. And if I click on one of them, it gives me all the information about that, that, that uh, emergency light. Um, it tells me it passed its function test on the 10th of March 2013. It tells me the charge date is 100%. It tells me the total lamp life is four hours. It also gives me all the information on the Dali. It also gives me a location. And then that once that test is carried out, it puts it back into a database so you can recall it for future use. You can identify the light fittings by just clicking identify and you can see the light flashing on and off. These two lights in here are, um, are set to 80% maximum. So I'm gaining 20% from just this one room alone of savings. Um, it's also got uh, a sensor which is daylight linked. So if the sun comes through the window, the lights will back off. Um, so it's even more energy saving. Often you see in a building you go and it's very bright, there's a lot of natural sunlight, a lot of modern buildings now have big glass windows and so on a sunny day there's a lot of natural light in the building. Humans prefer natural light than artificial light. The University of, of um, in partnership with uh, FAB and a company called Envine um, want to take the Dali lighting system a bit further and we're looking for um, energy monitoring and getting some information back out of the lighting system as to what our usage is. With the uh, university we've developed a software system called Greenlux that allows uh, energy reporting from every single uh, luminaire back to the uh, back to a central database with a web-based front end. You can highlight areas where you're getting high usage and then you can go and start uh, you know looking at why you know, why are we getting high usage in these areas? So Greenlux goes down, queries the, uh, the luminaire, finds out its level, finds out what its energy consumption is, and then we collate that back into some graphs and some data, and that allows the facilities team and energy management team to see uh, whether uh, the building really is saving as much energy as is first calculated. Externally, we're using a lot of LED lighting now because there's a big campus, open spaces, lots of footpaths. Um, we tend to um, use LED and, and there's some areas where we haven't changed any, any lamps in those areas for three years. So the, the benefits are quite high, not just the energy but also the, um, the maintenance costs. The, the biggest advantage 
is that uh, we actually get reported back that lights aren't working without having to send people out to check what the problem is. Before a user has noticed something's not operational, the uh, facility staff can have sent an engineer out who will have resolved the problem before the telephone's rung to report it. We have had um, rogue DALI devices, which have caused problems, um, but we've um, having a specialist um, commissioning engineer um, like FAB has helped us uh, overcome those problems. It's not been a straightforward install. We've had uh, problems with the install from the contractor side who thought they understood the system um, and have installed it wrongly, basically. The difficulties that we had with the contractors at the start was the understanding that DALI is not just about adding 64 devices to a cable and it's going to work. DALI supplies power and communication over a single uh, a cable and it's important that accurate calculations are done to make sure that a DALI leg is a, got the right number of devices on, but B, the power supply on the DALI system can power the devices that are on that leg. We've had to work closely with contractors now, and we've written a, our own specification for DALI, which we pass on to the contractor, and then we have uh, an induction before the contract starts to make sure everybody understands how it's to be installed. Um, DALI's not got a great name, and it's basically because people don't understand how it's actually put together. But if you put it together right, it's a fantastic system.